Finish the video on using logarithms and exponentials to solve equations. We've already co kind of covered this topic a little bit in previous videos, um, but we're just going to go into a bit more detail. We've already seen it, how we can um, use it to solve problems like this, where we can rewrite this as being 3x plus 1 equals log to the base 2 of 100, and then subtract the 1 and divide by 3 to work out what x is. Or if we've got an equation like this, we can say 2x minus 3 equals log natural 25. And then add the 3 and divide by 2 and work out what x is. So we've already seen how to solve equations like this. Uh, we've already seen how to solve equations like this, where if I want to remove the log to the base 5, then I can just say okay, this is the same thing as 5 to the power 3 and then I can subtract the 1 and divide by the 2. Or here, if I've got log natural of 3x minus 7 equals 2, then I can say 3x minus 7 equals e to the power 2, and then add the 7 and divide by the 3. So we've seen different, we've already seen all these examples so far. I want um, take it a little bit further though. We've seen something like this before when we did hidden quadratics back right at the beginning of the year, um, the very first topic. Uh, when we did that, we saw that we can um, deal with the power because we could write this um, 3 to the power 2x plus 1. We could write that as being 3 times 3 to the power 2x. Because remember, just undoing the index laws. This is the same thing as 3 to the power 1 times 3 to the power 2x. And in a similar way here, I could write 3x, 3 to the power x minus 1 as being 3 to the power x divided by 3 to the power 1. And then we can simplify a little bit. So the 2 times the 3 gives 6. So I've got 6 lots of 3 to the power 2x. Uh, the 33 divided by 3 is 11. And then we can make a substitution, because we've got our hidden quadratic now. We can say let uh, y equals 3 to the power x. So this is y squared. This is 11y. We can then factorise this. So it's going to be two minuses. Uh, I think that's going to have to be a three, and that's going to have to be a one, I think. Yeah, that works. So we factorised it. So y equals one third, or y equals 3 over 2. Now remember the substitution. So 3 to the power x equals 1 third. 3 to the power x equals 3 over 2. Okay, now, when we did this topic right at the beginning of the year, you could answer this one pretty easily because you could do it by inspection. You could just go, right, well, 3 to the power minus 1. 3 to the power minus 1 is going to give 1 third. But you couldn't do this when we did these at the beginning of the year. Now you can. You can go x equals log to the base 3 of 3 over 2. You can tap that into your calculator and you can actually get your decimal answer for that now. Next example. We've got 2 e to the power x plus 6 e to the power minus x equals 7. So first thing I'm going to do with this equation, I notice the first thing that looks hard to me about this equation is the minus power. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2 e to the power x plus 6 over e to the power x. And then that gives me a hint in the Right, if I multiply both sides of this equation by e to the power x, that's going to get rid of this complication. So times all of this by e to the power x, 
times this by e to the power of x. So 2e to the power of x times e to the power of x will be 2e to the power 2x. This is obviously just a 6 now. And over here, 7 e to the power of x. Now I can see I've got a hidden quadratic. So put everything on one side. Uh, make a substitution. So let's y equals e to the power x. So this is going to be 2y squared minus 7y plus 6. Factorise. So y equals 3 over 2, or y equals 2. Remember the substitution. So e to the x equals 3 over 2, or e to the x equals 2. And now we can solve both of these by taking logarithms. So x equals ln, so take the log natural of both sides, ln 3 over 2, or x equals ln 2. And those are my exact solutions to that equation at the top there. Okay, next example. Something like this where we have 3 to the power 2x minus 1 equals 4 to the power of x. Okay, so to do this, I want to, I'm going to take logarithms of both sides of this equation. Now, you can pick what base, what logarithm to use, which base um, you want for your logarithm. You could do ln, you could do log natural of both sides, you could do log base 10, so just log of both sides, you could do log to the base, you could choose log to the base 3 of both sides, or log to the base 4 of both sides. Any base you want, it's up to you. Um, if I just do log to the base 10, so I'm going to do log to the base 10, which remember I don't need to write the 10 for that, of the left hand side and then log to the base 10 of the right hand side and then using the laws of logarithms that allows me to bring the powers down so I can bring this whole power down and I'm going to bring it down with brackets because the whole thing is the power so the whole thing needs to come to the front if I don't put brackets there it's, it's very easy to get confused so make sure you use brackets when you do this bring the power down over there And the point is now, um, you don't have any more powers. So now, all you want to do is try and get the x's together on one side of this equation. So I'm going to expand the brackets here, so I can get 2x times log 3. I've got minus 1 times log 3. Next, I'm going to put everything with an x, put on one side. If it doesn't have an x, put it on the other side. So I'm going to have 2x log 3 minus x log 4 equals log 3. Factorise the x outside here. So that's going to give x times 2 log 3. And x times that's the log 4 then. And then finally, make x the subject. So divide both sides by all of this. You could type that into the calculator and actually work out what the number is, but I prefer it like that, it's exact. Um, so I'm going to leave it like that. Okay, a couple more examples. This one here. Again, I'm noticing that I've got powers on both sides, so I'm going to take 
uh, logs of both sides here. Um, in this example, I think I'm going to pick to do log, uh, log natural of both sides, I think, because um, I know it's going to cause some simplification of this E. Um, you could choose any logarithm, though, like I said. So in this case, I'm going to do log natural of 3 to the power x e to the 2x minus 1 equals log natural of 8. Right, using the laws of logarithms, I can split this up into two different logarithms. Okay, two things being multiplied together, I can split it up into two things being added. Now, use the power law here, so the x comes to the front, so that's going to be x ln 3. Here, <coughs> the log natural of e, well, they cancel out, and so that's just going to leave me with 2x minus 1. Like that. Next, um, everything with an x on one side, anything without an x on the other side, so this is an x, this is an x, let's leave those where they are. But let's take the 1 to the other side. Factorise, so I can take the x out here. And divide. There is actually one other slight thing I might do here. So good to get in the habit of doing this. When you get ln of something where you could write it as a power, for example, 8, I could write that as 2 cubed. So instead of 8 there, I could write 2 cubed, which would then allow me to take the 3 and write it at the front, like that. It uh, doesn't make any major differences here because it's not like I can do any further simplification. But um, it's a good habit to get into because quite often there will be further simplification that you could do. Uh, it's a good habit to get into when you do when, when you um, when you have that. Um, let's have a look at a couple more examples. So this one here, uh, graphically, basically, if I want to find where these two different graphs intersect. Obviously, I'm going to do this with simultaneous equations. The y, if the y coordinates are going to be the same at this point here, then I would say ln 3x minus 1 equals 2 plus ln x, so making them equal to each other. And then I could rearrange, use the laws of logarithms to solve this equation. So I'd get ln 3x minus 1 minus ln x which because it's a minus, I could then write that as a division in the same logarithm. And then uh, do the exponential of both sides. And then rearrange and find x to find that coordinate there. And then obviously substitute that back in to get the y coordinate at that point. And final example for this video is you could have simultaneous equations. They, don't, they often come up in A-level questions um, but you, uh, on this topic, but um, they could do. So I've got simultaneous equations. What makes it hard is obviously the logarithm. So I'm going to rewrite this. So let's think what this means. The base is x and the power is 1 half. So x to the power of 1 half equals y. Which, remember, I could rewrite that if I wanted to as being x equals y squared. Just a bit easier to deal with. Easy, it's easier to deal with squares than it is to deal with square roots. Substitute that into the second, just like we do with all simultaneous equations. So I could then say y squared plus y equals 6. Just putting y squared in instead of the x. And now this is a nice, easy quadratic to solve. y is minus 3, or y is 2. 
substitute these back up, so x equals y squared. So minus 3 squared is 9, 2 squared is 4. And just check, do they actually work? So we substitute these back in. If I do minus 3 plus 9, do I get 6? Yep. If I do 2 plus 4, do I get 6? Yes. And then check up here as well. Um, if I have, uh, if I substitute these in up here, do they work? Um, and, and you'll see that they will work up there as well. Anyway, that is again quite a long video, um, but lots of different examples there about how you can use uh, logarithms and exponentials to help you solve equations.